Hello everyone, I'm back today, not with a MoTeC Monday video, but just um, just to try to shed some light into an issue that I saw that came up in the iRacing forum. And it was related to the performance of the GT1 cars at Le Mans. And I noticed that a lot of people were talking about uh, specifically the aerodynamics of it. So I wanted to go ahead and use the aerodynamics worksheet um, worksheets that we made uh, on Monday to see if we could uh, try to figure out what's going on. Um, my theory going into this is that obviously there's a low downforce package that they run for Le Mans, meaning that they're probably running like a different um, splitter in the front. Uh, they're not running any uh, canards or dive planes in the nose. And then they run a completely different rear wing. So the wing angle is irrelevant because it's an entirely different low downforce wing. And then um, before what they could, I know that they would also blank off um, the uh, openings on the front of the car um, over the front wheels. There used to be some louvers that you could um, work with. I actually have an Aston Martin DVR9 from 2005, but uh, this would be the high downforce trim. And I used to have, but I don't have any more, the same car in Le Mans trim. And even the die cast, uh, you can see was entirely different. And um, this is it running with the high downforce rear wing. This, this car was ran at uh, Spa, Spa Frankershaw in the 24 hours of Spa in 2005. Okay, so let's look at the uh, results and see uh, what happened. So basically I ran the Le Mans setup at Le Mans, and you can hear, see here where I did my test zone. I, obviously I ran the historic Le Mans and um, did um, my reference run at 60 kilometers per hour, then at 150 and held constant speed. Then um, I did a coast down test. So this is the results for Le Mans. We see uh, I calculated the M uh, motion ratios um, and that stayed consistent. It doesn't show, show me what the wing angle is, but I'm just running the, um, the baseline Le Mans setup unchanged. So whatever the wing hole angle is there um, is what it is. Um, so we see the total downforce was 2300 newtons and the aero balance was 30% downforce to the front. So it has a good amount of downforce to the rear, but it is not that much downforce uh, entirely. And then now let's go ahead and compare that to the run at Daytona. Okay, so comparing it to the, now we have the run at Daytona and we can compare. Yeah, so that's gonna break down. That's fine, because they're entirely two different racetracks. Um, the motion ratio stayed the same. Rolling drag is about the same. Um, that, that's kind of difficult to calculate. So I'm going to make it so that it rounds uh, the numbers to more whole numbers. But you can imagine it's about 123 newtons, uh, which is about the same value that we got for the BMW. Um, total downforce, big time loss of downforce. Uh, basically, the regular down the regular package with the Le Mans setup is uh, you can see it's the same setup. It won't tell you what the wing angle is, but it's the same downforce, uh, same Le Mans setup. Um, it's about twice the downforce. Front percentage, thirty to thirty-five. So um, you actually have a little bit more nose downforce in the front, but the issue is just that it, it's completely uh, it has way more downforce overall. Um, drag coefficient is about the same. The lift coefficient is about t double. So you can see lift versus drag uh, ratio. Very, very slippery race car with, with, at Le Mans with the Le Mans package 1.8 and um, almost twice that with the, um, the regular downforce package. So pretty big difference. Uh, I, I think we can see pretty clearly that um, it's a huge, huge gain in downforce when you go to the bigger rear wing and um, probably, you know, uh, I think the front splitter is probably a little bit longer and wider uh, with the, the downforce package. And then they do run uh, the dive planes in the front. Even um, even in this die cast, we can see the dive planes in the front. Um, I wish I had my other one. That one is in my home in Miami, but um, that one you can see is, it's down, low downforce. I can probably find some photos online right now. 
Okay, so let's look at a couple of different Aston Martins um, and look at the different trims and the different things that they do. You'll notice the rear wing here um, has a more typical angle of attack on it. Um, the leading edge is kind of flat um, if you look at it from the front and um, has a large frontal area. Here we see the dive planes highlighted in orange. And you can see that there are louvers that are open over the wheel arches. Those dramatically increase uh, front downforce and the efficiency of the downforce in the area, um, reducing drag and also help increase the downforce. Um, we can see again, this is the same race car from the front, the frontal area of that rear wing, much larger than what we expect to see at Le Mans. So this is uh, the trim in, at Le Mans trim. And you can see, um, the front splitter is, is absolutely clean. Um, it doesn't have, some of the other ones I've seen have a little bit more of an angle of attack um, towards the edge where it kind of works with the, the front dive plane, but we don't see that here. You can also see that the louvers on the wheel arch are planked off. So now um, they don't want that downforce anymore, even though um, it improves the efficiency. Uh, overall drag is reduced with this. Um, and then you can see the rear wing is completely different where the frontal area, if you were to look at it from the front, you would barely be able to see it. And uh, it still makes downforce because um, from the leading edge, the uh, actual wing kind of plunges in on itself and then comes back out. And then they're running a small wicker bill um, on that rear wing. Look at the frontal area here. You can't even see the words Aston Martin anymore. This is, um, again, the front splitter is very clean. Well, this is not even um, a DBR9. This is clearly a GT2 car. But um, similar uh, case with the wing, you can see how low downforce they go. This is gonna be a high downforce trim um, package, um, probably taken at some other racetrack. This is American Moss uh, sign. This looks like Mazda Raceway. But again, here you see two dive planes put in. You can see the beginning of the louvers. And you can see the frontal area on that rear wing. Same thing here. Um, this looks like probably a photo taken. It says Le Mans 2008, but this looks like Paul Ricard. And they were testing. And this is going to be a high downforce package. Look at that rear wing. Frontal area of it is massive. The, 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 the louvers, again, are also a very big deal. But then when you see the actual car of the mall, look at that rear wing. You barely can see it. So it's a big difference. You can see the louvers with a little bit uh, easier time here. It's hard to tell, but they may also be making this hole a little bit smaller uh, when they're running it in low downforce trim. I imagine that this may be for brake cooling. Here it looks like the hole is blanked off a little bit. It looks like they maybe have put some black tape on the hole uh, over the, the cover here. Um, on the inside, it looks just a little bit darker, like the color's a little bit different. Ah, uh, yeah, you can see now they definitely blanked off the, uh, the openings here. You can see this is an actual part and not tape. So, and, and again, you can't even read the words uh, written on the rear wing. So, I mean, these are some of the things that the teams have done. That's what differentiates the high downforce from low downforce package. Uh, it looks like they're uh, closing off the openings um, to the front, to the nose of the car. They're blanking off the, um, the vent holes for the air underneath the wheel arches. They remove the front dive planes and they run a completely different low downforce wing. So I hope that sheds a little bit of light of what's going on with the car. Um, I think a lot of people are complaining that the car is actually a real handful to drive. And um, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it was in real life too, especially if you see the dramatic loss of downforce. Um, kind of reminds me of when I used to uh, run uh, more Formula One stuff and you feel the, the change in the low downforce package at uh, Monza. And then it feels like you're essentially braking twice as early and uh, going through corners um, half the speed that you normally do. But I mean, you just kind of have to get on with it and, and live with it. But I would say probably don't be afraid to 
add more wing to the to the Lamal package and do whatever you need to to get a handle on it and know that um, it, it's a dramatically different aerodynamic package. Uh, you should alter the setup heavily and and, uh, and already you're you're starting off with the baseline of half the downforce that you normally have. So they clearly have set it up to kind of just you know hold on like a cowboy and go as fast as he can down the straightaway, but um, it, you def it, it's definitely going to make the driver earn his money. So, um, hope this helps, and I uh, I look forward to uh, Monday. I think we're going to be working on some tire pressure stuff and doing tire temperature analysis, so um, please subscribe so you can catch uh, up to all the other MoTeC Monday videos. Until then.